Please, let me begin by thanking everyone here for coming to share for what it seems to me the end of a very long but exciting journey. The story truly began some 134 years ago in a salon in Paris, celebrated for a prize in the Paris Exposition, Paris Exposition Universelle de 1889. And then its whereabouts would become unknown for about a hundred years. A document mentioned it was in the collection of the Louvre. Some speculated it had been burned by the Pardo de Tabelas out of their spite for Luna. The mystery of its existence only grew to the engravings and mentions of the splendor in 19th century publications. But where was it? Nobody knew. My own story began some 15 years ago when I first heard of the treasure. By then, it was the ultimate grail of Philippine art. Much talked about by collectors, much revered, but nowhere to be found. That, of course, made it even more tantalizing. It was Dr. Eleuterio Teat Pascual, I believe, who first saw this painting some 50 years ago. His eloquence got the better of him in recounting to me his impressions at first sight. It was, I thought, the greatest painting that didn't exist. But there were no leads for, uh, left to me. I knew only one other person who knew this, but no collector nor dealer would ever give a clue. And so it was a race to find it, but a race no one would share the map to the grail. The dream of finding it would thus become a tireless obsession, and I would find myself haunting galleries and dealers, famous and some infamous, all over Europe, courting old maids and befriending aristocrats, and everybody and anybody in between who had some connection to Juan Luna and to the Philippines. It would always be futile, and my hopes always dashed. And then one day in 2014, I got a call and was told to be at the doorstep of a certain aristocratic home in a European city by 10 a.m. sharp. And there I was. I could not believe what was revealed and finally laid for me. It was the grail. But there is one thing that I must impress upon you tonight. Beyond the splendor and magnificence of this masterpiece is its true meaning and intention. Above all, this work is a testament and a monument to love. I will leave that to Ambeto Campo, Mariles Costillo, Lisa Guerrero Napil, and Martin Arnaldo to tell you why. And so here we are, ladies and gentlemen. The time has come to unbox the grail. The mystery has been solved, it has been found. I would like to thank, first and foremost, the Ayala Museum for making this happen. Thank you to their curators, and this is probably the Philippines' most studied, documented, and analyzed painting today. And to all of you, thank you very much once again for having gathered here with the intention of marking our 125th year of Filipino nationhood, even more special by remembering Juan Luna, one of its greatest architects alongside Jose Rizal and Andres Bonifacio. Through his brush and palette, Luna spoke to the world best of what it means to be a Filipino. And because of that, he was able to move mountains and help create a nation.